these movies were filmed, as well as there's um, helicopter tours and um, hiking to be experienced along the Nepali coast. But yes, this is an island just for somebody who just wants to um, basically just rejuvenate and get away from the burdens of um, city life. <laughs> I could do that right now. I've just moved from a very small village of 150 people to a very large village of 5,000, and it's freaking me out a little bit. I miss the peace and quiet. <laughs> <clears throat> Hello. What about my phone call? I want to call my family. Too late now. Please, please, please. Step through now, please. Oh, no. Too late now. Here's the goods. You take them in false bottom bag, you strap them to your body, it's up to you. Look, I've, I've changed my mind. I want out. <laughs> Too late now. So, you're offering me a free holiday? Yeah. I just have to bring back something for a friend of yours? That's right. And you'll get some serious cash. Right. Well? Um... Not too late. Don't get talked into trafficking drugs. Once you're in, the British government can't get you out. Don't throw your life away. You can follow me on Twitter at holiday underscore hut. Still to come, uh, photo tips from Matt w- Widdery. Oh dear, I really should start inviting people on the show whose names I can pronounce. Or I have to take some of those elocution lessons. How now, brown cow? Well, the rain in Spain mainly falls on the plane, in it. Whatever. Matt's going to be sharing some uh, photo tips later on in the show. But before that, we're going to finish off with Caroline Anderson, who's a tourism brand manager at the Hawaiian Tourism Authority. And we're going to finish off about what the islands of Hawaii have to offer. You said there's a ferry boat, which surprised me. I wasn't expecting a ferry. But how easy is it to get around the island if you want to do a multi-centre trip? Sure. Yeah, it's um, it's very easy. So mm-hmm. all the islands are connected by airplane, and so, you know, from Oahu or Honolulu, it's basically a 25-minute plane ride to Kauai, a 35-minute plane ride to Maui, and then from Oahu to the Big Island, it's about 45 minutes, and only the islands of yeah Maui, um, Lanai and Maui and Molokai is there a ferry system. And it's about a 45-minute um, boat ride from Maui to um, Lanai and about 90 minutes from Maui to Molokai. That's not too long then. That's quite good, isn't it? Yeah, it's hmm. not too long at all. Um, very easy hmm. to uh, hire a car. And I would hmm. totally recommend it because, you know, you should get out and explore the island and see all that um, each island has to offer. In Honolulu, it's very easy to um, get around by public transportation or the bus, mm-hmm. but a car is would also be ideal as well. When it comes to hiring a car, what paperwork do you need to make sure you have with you before you take the car away? Um, you definitely need a driver's license and mm-hmm. a credit card, and that's all you need. It's not yep. that difficult at all. Okay. I used to wear a Hawaiian shirt all the time to publicize my business. My wife hated it. But do Hawaiian shirts actually come from Hawaii? Yes, Hawaiian shirts definitely come from Hawaii. And actually, a lot of, I I would say majority of people wear Hawaiian shirts, Mm -hmm. um, especially um, business people. Like only a lawyer would wear a suit and tie to work. So, um, yeah, we all, the men wear Hawaiian shirts to work, definitely. You know, I wore mine walking through the, the local town centre and I did feel a bit... Well, I stood out quite a lot. So, yeah, <laughs> one or two stares at me. But uh, it did help yeah, with no, the business. You <laughs> no, you won't stand out when you come to Hawaii wearing it. Even a bright pink one? Uh, maybe a bright pink one, but <laughs> you can pick up some other ones while you're <laughs> in Hawaii. With all the different islands and the airports to choose from, is it easy to do a DIY trip or should you use a travel agent or a tour operator to put it together? Yeah. You know, most people um, do use a travel agent or a tour operator to put their trip together because Mm -hmm. 
they're un, you know they're not familiar with our destination. But definitely, if you do, you know, your research, you could do it on your own. But mm. I would say majority do go through a travel agent or tour operator. Well, I nearly always mention food when I interview people. Uh, what's the uh, Hawaiian dish to have when you're over there? The Hawaiian dish, you know, um, we have such a wide range of um, culinary delights um, mm -hmm. throughout our islands. You know, we're um, we're known for our Hawaii or Hawaiian uh, regional cuisine, and what that is, it's a blend of the different ethnicities um, found in our islands. So it's a blend of Asian, European, and Hawaiian. And what's great about this Hawaiian regional cuisine is that it uses locally grown or produced, um, you know, uh, fruits, vegetables, beef, fish, so that you know that it's been sourced from Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And yes, when you taste it, you'll, you'll never want to eat any other cuisine again. <laughs> But now, not only do we have that, but we have, you know, everything from, you know, the traditional Hawaiian food like Kalua pig and poi to, um, you'll find, you know, Asian um, foods and European foods as well. Is there any part of Honolulu which is the best place to go for food or can you just find great food wherever you are? Yeah, you can just find great food wherever you are. Um, some of the growing hot spots are um, in Kaimuki the number of um, up-and-coming restaurants there mm -hmm. as well as in downtown Chinatown as, as well again um, offering that blend of you know um, Asian and uh, European and Hawaiian influences all together I shouldn't have brought it up I'm quite hungry now That's not <laughs> me. I'm getting hungry too <laughs> From what, how you describe the islands and the scenery and things to see and do, it sounds like the ideal location for a, for a honeymoon. What would be the uh, a good itinerary for a couple on their honeymoon? You know, um, that's a good question, and I think it just depends on, you know, what the couple is into. So, you mm. know, if they're, you know, if they've never surfed before, maybe they want to go down to Waikiki Beach to learn how to surf together, mm -hmm. or if the couple is, um, you know, has that more adventurous streak to them maybe they want to um uh you know do some hiking or trekking um on Kauai or on Hawaii Island and if they just want to just get away and relax and just sit on the beach and look at the sunset together and hold hands and stare in each other's eyes well that can be done too <laughs> so it doesn't you know it's a place for for any uh romance um any romantic getaway now, I've got an anniversary coming up. Perhaps I should look into that. It might I give me some brownie points. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. We talked about the nature and the hiking and the surfing and stuff, but is it an ideal location for kids? Is there stuff for uh, teenagers and slightly older oh, yeah. children to do? Yes, no, definitely. And actually, in Hawaii, we're very much um, family-oriented, or you know, the word ohana means family uh, in Hawaiian, and... Yes, there's definitely tons of um, activities for kids to do, whether it's um, going to one of the aquariums on Oahu or Maui to um, just being in the ocean. And, you know, you could um, go to the tidal poles and see, you know, the nature firsthand to hiking. Um, some hotels also offer um, uh, lessons on how to do hula or uh, learn to play the ukulele. Um, but no matter what, there's, yeah, there's definitely great activities for uh, kids. And finally, how do we find out more about visiting Hawaii? Sure. To learn more about um, our destination, um, you can visit gohawaii.com slash UK, and there you'll find more, inform more information for your trip planning. That's a nice and easy one to remember, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Okay, thanks, Caroline. Thank you for your time. Thanks, John. You can keep up to date with travel news and leave me a message at facebook.com slash John Green Travel Show. If you've been to Hawaii, uh, please do share your pictures at facebook.com slash John Green Travel Show. When I was a travel agent, there was a great cruise, well, I thought it was a great cruise for people who like golf. 
you cruise around Hawaii, the different islands, and then when you got into port, you're then taken to a golf club and you've got to play on some really expensive and very flash golf courses around the islands. The bags got taken to the club for you and then they got taken back. If you're in a golf, that looked like the ideal trip and definitely better than popping off down to Portugal for a few, uh, was it frames, rounds, whatever you do when you play golf. So if you're into golf, do check out cruises around Hawaii, see if you can do the golf trip. Now, a long time ago, I went on my first safari, way before I was in the travel. And before that, we went, I went and bought myself a decent SLR camera. My wife went nuts because it was very expensive at the time. She didn't see the point of it. But with all the different interchangeable lenses, it took some great pictures of the animals we saw. And she could see the reasons why I wanted to buy the camera. When you go abroad and you come back and look at your pictures, you can be disappointed because you don't know how to use it properly. Before I went on safari, I went around Woburn and took pictures of uh, the lions and whatever. As it was foggy, it got in for half price as well. So as a result, got to practice with my camera and I didn't have to pay too much. But you do really need to know what you're doing and how to make the best of your equipment and how to frame the shots to make decent pictures. So you don't just get a snap, you get a quality picture you can hang up on your wall if that's what you wish. Or, of course, you can take a professional photographer with you. And I did work out once that it was cheaper to get married in Fiji fly your favourite photographer over to take the pictures than it was to get married in England. Something for you to consider, I guess, uh, now the Valentine's Day is coming up and you might want to propose. Another way is to speak to a professional and uh, learn from them. And Matt Widgery, he does courses on how to take photos and trips around Europe. This was recorded last year, so some of the trips may have changed, but the website details still the same. And the tips he's sharing are still the same. So do have a listen. And when he talks about the trips he does, it may inspire you to go on one of them and uh, learn how to use your camera correctly. So let's get to find out how to make the most of our cameras when I speak to Matt. So um, for me, it's it's all about the intent of the photo. So when you go out and you take your picture, it doesn't matter if you're using an iPhone or the latest and greatest fancy camera gear. The most important thing is that when you raise your camera up to your eye to take a picture, you're, you're thinking about it with, with intent. That means some creativity going behind it. So that you're not just kind of thinking, oh, look, there's a, a pretty bitch over there and lifting up your iPhone and sort of going click. And what you're actually doing is saying, okay, well, there's a nice palm tree over there. If that kind of folds down and like if I duck down a little bit, I can kind of see the mountain underneath there and maybe the sunset coming in over the water. So maybe if I move three feet up the, be- up the beach and then kind of like sit down a bit, then that makes a nice photo rather than just kind of being where you are at the time because of lifting up and going click. So for me, it's the intent behind the picture that is the absolute key to everything. And that goes not just really for, for sort of travel photography or holiday mm-hmm. photography, but anything. If you're, if you're keen on in, in improving what you do and taking it to the next level um, with photography, it, it's all about just having a little bit of thinking process. There's a, I can't remember which photographer it is. It, uh, for me, it feels like an Ansel Adams quote. I might mm-hmm. be wrong. But it was someone like that, and he said the most important part of the camera, the most important sort of, you know, uh, gadget or gimmick on that little black box is six inches behind it. It's that kind of grey squishy matter <laughs> that's in your head that's thinking about the picture before you ever click the button. So that's, that's really it. Yeah, for me, it's the intent of the picture. So you would say the biggest mistake holidays make, holiday makers make when they take a photograph is not to use the grey squidgy stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Use more grey squidgy stuff. Mm-hmm. That's, <laughs> that's really the thing. And um, so, yeah, I mean, you know, if you want to be, um, you know, so that if, if you're, if you're out and about and you, you're not necessarily sort of thinking about photography as your main reason for going there, which most people are not, you know, they're out there with the mm-hmm. family and they're out there with loved ones who frankly don't really care about the, about you taking pictures and they don't want you to be sat there for a bunch of time doing all this stuff. You, you, you don't necessarily want to be there for a long time kind of framing all this stuff up, but as the photography fan in the group, as you're walking down the street or strolling on the, on, on the beach, if you've got this little subroutine playing in the back of your brain, 
that just is thinking, OK, this is kind of like a nice scene. Like, a, where's the light coming in from? What compositional elements can I take advantage of here? And then if you do get five minutes because, you know, the kids want to go up and run, get an ice cream um, or, you know, perhaps you know, the other members of the family want to go and do a bit of shopping or, you know, grab a nice drink down at the bar by the beach. You can quickly scooch off. You kind of know already because you've been thinking about it where the shot ought to be. So you're using that grey matter, not just necessarily at the time when you're taking a picture, but like all the time. It's kind of like just running as a, a little programme then you can 